First of all, I hope that uh, we are coming to you and we are coming to you and you can hear us. I know that uh, we have technical difficulties my first time, but uh, right now I'm really excited and uh, ignited tonight to do this teaching, this Bible study, and I hope that it really uh, blesses you as it has uh, been a blessing to me. Uh, first of all, uh, let me say, uh, I hope that uh, once again that you're out there, this is a trio stream where we do one on Sunday morning at Sunday school at 9.30 with Deacon Javier Duran, and then we do another one uh, at 11 o'clock when I do what's called Soulful, which is the word of the day, and then also on uh, Tuesday now we do Bible study. I want to talk to you tonight because we are experiencing one of the most, uh, uh, one of the most toughest times ever in the history of our lifetime. I don't know about you, and in my lifetime, I've never seen anything that stops the entire globe that it equates. It uh, does not discriminate whether you're a billionaire or whether uh, you're welfare. Uh, we all are on the same page. And so right now, I want to talk about this because there is a message for the people of God especially. A message for the people of God especially. I talked about this on Sunday. And I talked about it, you know, uh, from another angle. And I want to kind of give you some uh, tidbits from what I talked about on Sunday. But also, I want to add a little more meat on the bone. So I want to help give you some structure from Sunday. And I want to put a little more meat on the bone. First of all, let me tell you what we're dealing with with this uh, coronavirus crisis and with this situation. What we're dealing with is massive. It's monumental, especially for the people of God. Now, first of all, let me say that. God is allowing some things to happen. There are some things that are transpiring. And if we miss getting our message for this moment and for this season, then we are going to really be experiencing a devastation. And it's already been quite devastating. So I just want to say to you all that God needs us to know what's coming will make what has come thus far look minimal if we do not get the message and we do not apply the message to our lives. In other words, don't miss this. There is a lot that has already happened, but what will happen and what will continue to happen will be minimal if we do not get the message. Yes, greater, we say greater is coming. Greater will come if God grows greater in our lives, if he grows greater in our focus, if he grows greater in our priorities, if he grows greater in our lifestyles, if he grows greater in our actions, but if we rebel and refuse to return and press forward from our wicked ways, then we are going to have to have a major issue to deal with us even more. So first of all, first of all, I want to tell you to go ahead on and log into uh, our Faith House a live page. Uh, also, uh, we, I think we're coming across on uh, YouTube. I'm not sure right now. I want to make sure that we're coming across on YouTube. But right now, I'm going to get ready to get into the teaching uh, or go to our Faith House page. We're on your page, not the Faith House. Okay, I'll go to my personal page, which is Willie D. Brown, as opposed to the Faith House page. All right. Uh, we're gonna get this right because I don't want I don't want to I don't want to miss any of this. I want to make sure that we get this. So first of all, let me go back. There is a message for the people of God from the God of the people, and if we do not get the message as the church, if we do not get the message as the people of God, what we have already seen that has been devastating to us as a nation, as a country, as a planet, we haven't seen anything else. We say greater is coming. God wants us to have greater, and greater will come, but it will only come for us, y'all, if God grows greater in our lives from this tragic situation. He has to grow greater in our focus. He has to grow greater in our priorities. He has to grow greater in our lifestyles. He has to grow greater in our actions, but... If we continue to rebel and we continue to refuse to return and give true repentance and press forward from our wicked ways, we are going to have trouble that we don't even want to think about right now. So in other words, we've got to press forward. We've got to turn from the wicked ways, our, our warped witness in the church. We have uh, brought a lot on ourselves because we have been tacky and we have been raggedy, not individually out. I'm not calling anybody out. I'm saying all of us collectively. We have, we cannot win a world with a warped witness. And so the church has to stand like the church. They have to act like the church. They have to love God like the church. So, there is a word for the world, and the word for those who know the word, which are us. 
And we have to understand that, yes, we have coverage and we have a providential protection under the word. Mm -hmm. But you got to understand that we have got to be in compliance and not defiance of what God expects us to do. Right now, I hear people all the time say, you know what, Pastor? I can't wait until this is over. I can't wait to get out of this house. So my question is, what is it that you're going to do? What has this situation done? What has it sparked you to in this time of being quarantined and being locked in and being limited and restricted to do what you normally do? When you say you can't wait till this is over and you can't wait to get out of this house, you can't wait so you can do what? After you get out, if God allows there to be a pause in this pain, will I change my lifestyle? Will I change the way I love? Will I change the way I live? Will I change the way I make him a priority in my life? Or will he continue to be a minority in our life? So when you say I can't get out, when it stops, you can show what you learned. You can show how you grew spiritually. You can show how you refocused. You can show how you repositioned. You can show how you refueled. Or you can return to live as we were living before. Once again, the question to you is this. I can't wait to get out the house. So when you get out the house, what's going to be different? When you go out, will you go back to the club? Will you go back to happy hour? Will you go back to the party scene? Or will you go up? in prayer to God or will you go out into doing our primary kingdom assignment you know Jesus left us an assignment in Matthew the 28th chapter he left us a chapter uh, that went before he uh, did his farewell message and right now what are you going to do what are you going to do so right now, uh, uh, we want to just kind of do a pause to make sure that everything is coming across and then we're going to return and try to get this moving. 